there. All right. Recording has started. And just for experimental, I'm just going to try to turn on preview mode here for a minute. Sure. See if you don't see how I'm curious if it shows up on the video. OK, <laughs> back to normal. Ready for screen share. All right. Max has gone quiet. Oh, yeah, and I'm just clicking away in here. Oh, do you want me to share mode? Oh, no, well, it's time to start, yeah. Oh, OK, OK. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 it's fine. Let's wait for, the, for your cue. <laughs> oh, yeah, take it away, Max. Right now? All right, I thought you were going to do some intros, some things, or? Not like, really, not... no. I did the little uh, swag stuff. Oh, OK. I don't I don't have a lot of ceremony. All right. All right. So let me see how do I share this thing here? Because I got I got my whole. Screen too. perfect. There you go. Hi. Can you guys see the screen? Yep. Yeah. All right. So can I start now? Yep. It's official. Oh, hey. It's recording. Hi. Uh, okay. right. Well, <laughs> As I mean, uh, some of you already know me, so my name is Maximo Trinidad, and this is our session for tonight, online with .NET Interactive Notebooks. Although I may change this title in the future after all the things that I did to get this thing going. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is right off the oven. Uh, I was telling Dave that uh, I just finished building the presentation in PowerPoint just 30 minutes ago. And so it was really challenging, but hope the content will be very interesting for you guys. And the best of all, everything that I did to get this going is available for you to try it out. That's the beauty of this, OK? So let's get things going. Thank you for Codes Cafe user group for having me. Warning, my house alarm may go off. I mean, my guard dogs. OK, so you will hear some barking. That's for sure. I guarantee this. If they don't, then behave pretty good. All right, so agenda for today. Here we got. I'm going to talk about me and the speaker quickly. Then we're going to go in because I work for Saving Technologies. I uh, have a slide here for our products if you're interested. And of course, we've got what is required to get all this thing going. And we're going to talk a little bit of uh, notebooks apps. And then the demo is going to be very interesting to watch. Uh, if you try to tag along with me, if you have already some of these components installed and you're playing a little bit, hopefully what I uh, showing in here will be very beneficial. I know it's going to be very beneficial in, in either way. Uh, I'm still new to notebooks, but uh, it's it's very, very interesting technology. And especially when when you merge it, you know, when you use it with all the what is available in Windows 10. OK, so let's get here. Uh, I've been a community speaker since 2006. I participated in many of the .NET Code Camp, SQL Saturdays, and IT Pro Camps events, and still does. So hopefully uh, we'll have the next uh, virtual uh, IT Pro Camp Jacksonville. Uh, will be, if not, if I'm mistaken, October 10. Uh, I'll post this a little more information today so you can uh, announce the uh, event more officially. Uh, I've been an MVP since 2009, uh, started with PowerShell, and now I'm in the cloud and data center and data center management. I work for Sapien Technology as their technology evangelist, uh, three years now, uh, and it's been very challenging, uh, that's for sure. If you need to contact me, uh, here's my contact information, uh, my Sapien's email, Twitter, and LinkedIn. All right, uh, bear with me on this one. This is just... I'll give you an idea of what my company uh, does for the administrator. We develop tools for the administrator. And basically, under the umbrella of the DevOps suite that we got, uh, we have Porsche Studio and Primal Script. Those are the two main flag uh, products. Uh, also, we provide uh, PowerShell Help Writer. Uh, one of the very interesting ones is the PowerShell Module Manager. 
because this one help you manage your modules. Sometimes you install modules in in uh, in your system, but there's no way to find out these are updates, uh, how to remove them, how to keep uh, updating this, and this will give you a good idea, uh, good application to manage them. Uh, from WMI Explorer application, now we change it to Sim Explorer and make more sense keeping up with technology. We have a version recall for source uh, uh, management. Uh, Primal SQL is a basic um, uh, SQL editor. Um, so, so you you know you install so many components in SQL Server. This is just for the for the very uh, uh, straight down T SQL level stuff that you can do. And then of course, Primal XML. Who doesn't work with XML? Many people do work with XML, and a good XML editor is always useful. For most of the applications that I mentioned in here, I, I took the time and laid out what it does with a little uh, animated GIF file so you can see some of the things that, that the application does. Here's Chrome PowerShell Studio, Primus Kit, the same thing. This is the multi-language uh, um, editor. So you have Python, Bash, or uh, C Sharp, Cold Snippets. It's good for quick editing. Um, then let's go here. Here's an example of PowerShell uh, Module Manager. Give you a good glimpse of what is done, how can benefit you uh, when you're managing your, your modules, uh, PowerShell modules installed in your system. Uh, the sample, the SIM manager, which has recently have also the ability of whatever SIM uh, one-liner that you have created, have the ability also to create um, GUI uh, solutions right from this application in, in a simple way. Also, we have some free tools, you know, very, very keep an eye on the uh, power Regex, a very nice utility if you work with Regex in a profile uh, editor, uh, basic help. Uh, that's the uh, Microsoft help to help you on that one. Um, for more information, you can email sales. Um, or we have the website. Uh, you, you use our product or you want to request uh, some, some features to it. So we have the feature request um, link and also we support 24-7 Here's our support forms you can access. OK, so now let's get our hands dirty in here. What is required to make all this thing work? I mentioned this is a .NET interactive notebook, right? But it's a lot more than that, OK? Yes, that's what uh, at least the uh, .NET interactive, what it basically does is give you that .NET language that can be used in the Jupyter notebook. If you don't know what Jupyter Notebook is, as a data, uh, it's a browser-based solution that allow you to uh, create documents where you can put code snippets. Uh, mainly was used for R and Python, uh, but now you can do .NET and you can do Spark. Okay, and, you know, and I'll show you that. This is what entails. It looks scary, right? Windows 10, WSL, uh, Anaconda is the main ingredient for the notebook for you to work. That that's need to be in place. SQL Server is optional, but of course you want to play with SQL Server. So this is there. Done interactive and global tools. That's what you, after you install you might, all those. Yes. Hey Max, you might say what, what WSL is. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, WSL is Windows Subsystem for Linux. That's the uh, that's the Linux component that it's part of Windows 10 right now, and you have access to it. Especially if you have the latest version of Windows, which I'm going to explain afterwards, WSL2 is the latest version, okay? It's, it's, how, it's how virtual machines should work. What's that? It's how virtual machines should work. Yes, as a standalone. Very nice. It's very easy to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, I was going to go into further on, on the different levels here. So, yeah. So. Yes, yeah, so this is just basically what, what we're going to go through. Uh, Windows 10 client. The, uh, the latest RTM version is version 2004, uh, which includes the Windows subsystem for Linux 2. It's better well known as WSL2. Uh, is the latest update is July 2020. Better get that one because the May edition has some issues and was causing a lot of uh, system problems. Uh, or just get the Windows Insider release, and that gets always updated in um, uh, every week, as a matter of fact. OLSL is Windows Subsystem for Linux. Two, why? 
because it's a lightweight VM. It's not supported by Hyper-V. That's the thing. It's not. It's a. It's a lightweight VM, not supported by a Hyper-V. So in other words, you don't have the ability to change network adapter. Okay. It has its own IP address. Any additional distribution because you can have multiple versions of of W uh, of of Linux distro uh, in Windows 10. Okay. Uh, of, of WSL, uh, Alpine, uh, you can have uh, SUSE, uh, but if you have multiple version in one in your Windows 10, it will share the same IP address. That's the thing that I just discovered during this weekend because I've added uh, 20.04 on my system. It's a good environment to work and study how to uh, with Docker co uh, containers, okay? It's interesting because now you have you install Docker container, it supports uh, WSL2, and what it does is now you can work at the Windows level and the DOS level with with Linux containers. Okay, now in this uh, in this session, I've got the graphical desktop working in WSL2. Why? This is important because when you install the WSL2, it's all command line. Uh, it's all command line. There's no GUI yet. The GUI part is going to be integrated by the end of the year. The only way to get the graphical desktop to work in WSL2 is if you install uh, the X, uh, the XRDP, which is the remote desktop piece in Linux. Okay. Anaconda. Uh, I don't know if you heard of Anaconda, but Anaconda is a data science platform. This is what installed Python in your system. You can install it for Windows and Linux. Uh, this is. It is all comes with Jupyter Notebook. This is the main component we're going to start building and using no Notebook. Uh, and they have other applications I'm going to explain later. Uh, it comes only with the Python kernel. OK, and it does support the uh, PowerShell console. You see in a, uh, you see here when I click here on my. Explorer application Explorer and then I go to Anaconda. You see this come with Anaconda PowerShell prop. I created the one for PowerShell 7. I have a blog post in on my uh, uh, already available which show how to create a shortcut for that. But it comes with PowerShell. Support Windows PowerShell. I just included the one to support uh, PowerShell core. OK, so uh, the scans. Yeah, the latest version includes uh, Python 3.8. But for this particular session, I had to go back and install the February version of Anaconda just because everything this uh, Jupyter Notebook version 2 or greater is not supported by the um, uh, SQL Alchemy uh, Python. So you, 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 you're going to see what I'm talking about. That component is really important because it does give you the access to your SQL. And they normally, uh, the SQL Alchemy Support most most of the time you see all the all the documentation and posts uh, is referred more for the Linux databases, but SQL Server supported. But if I found that it was lacking information on how to use it in SQL Server, I figure it out and I will show it to you. Of course, we got SQL Server installed. Linux and Windows are supported. Uh, WCL2 Windows System for Linux is not supported, but you can install it. It can run as a server because its services are not supported uh, uh, in the lightweight. But you can have an active session. So in other words, I can run SQL Server 2019 on WSL2 if I have a live session, uh, an active live session running the, the, the program. Now this is a part. OK, don't interactive and robot tools. This is the most important part for, for this is they include all the .NET kernels so you can use it in your Jupyter Notebook. OK, uh, I will explain a little bit more. There are other kernels available outside of Jupyter Notebook uh, of, of Anaconda you're, that you can install separately. Uh, below here I mentioned Spark and Node.js. Alright, so additional Python packages. This is what makes everything connect, OK? And I already, already got a text file explaining how to set up everything in here, how to install these packages, what to do, what to change, everything laid out. I'm going through this. It's 
three times of all my system just to make sure I have the right flow, it will be available for you. Well, basically you need the IPython interactive shell for, for Jupyter, you the PYODBC, that's a connector for both Windows and Linux, and then you have the SQL Alchemy Python SQL tool. We support all of this main three Linux and support SQL Server. And I put that at the end because that you'll you'll see when I open the browser, they, they only explain to you the first three. SQL Server is like, okay, uh, what's going on? Well, no, it is supported. It just you gotta I had to figure it out how to how to create a string. All right, now everything tied up together for more technology to use. This is Windows Terminal Preview. Okay, uh, I'm gonna show you right right here. Give you a hint of what you can do. Uh, here I got multi, uh, it's, it's one application. I got multiple session in one tab. And I'll show you what else can do. Multi console in a single terminal. That's that's great because you can use PowerShell, Linux, and DOS in one single uh, uh, application open at the same time. So you can move be between them instead of separate consoles. Okay. This is due to the uh, command line support. Yes, you can open DOS and or PowerShell and do WT as a command and fill in the, the, the rest of the parameters and you can activate whatever you want to configure it as. Uh, yes, so Windows Terminal is configurable, okay? And then of course we have the code editors where you're going to build the app. Without this, then you cannot complement uh, uh, using a notebook because first we start with the code and then we can use this, put it in our notebook for for test, right? I mean, we could give this document to this person, check, look, uh, this is the code I have, this is the result I got, and I'll show you more when I activate one of my uh, notebooks to see what I'm talking about in here. Notebook apps. Well, originally we have three different apps, right? We got Anaconda, have the Jupyter Lab, which is a browser base. You open the browser and have all your option of the kernels available for you. This is this one here. Oh, sorry. This is this one here, right? Then we have Interact. Interact is a Windows application. Uh, to tell the truth, I feel this a little clunky. It's kind of a little slow, but still, you can open a notebook and, and you need to hear just the application, not browser based, okay? This one, we need to activate uh, um, a session in Linux, you'll you see it how. And this one, it just automatically runs. And then we have, if you don't want to do any installation, you want to experience notebook and this feature. You have to bring in some samples, uh, uh, but you cannot, you know, used to play with it, okay, to understand, just get familiar with it. Then you have Binder. Binder is a browser bay, no installation. You just go to the link and then uh, uh, you can explore. All right, now we're ready for the demo. Perfect. All right, so for the demo, uh, let me look here at my uh, session flow. Okay, so for the demo, let's start with, let's start with, boom. This is WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, I'm running a remote desktop calling it local, basically, and let me go back in here. Let me close this up, so you do the whole process here, log out. Basically, this is because I loaded RxDP, and I have the RSD, uh, RxDP uh, service running behind the scene, so when I connect, I can go ahead and do my ID and password. This is this is because I'm connecting to a local uh, re re remote session. Uh, originally, if I open if I open Ubuntu on a regular uh, desktop, there's no graphics in here. You can you can do any graphic in here. Everything is everything is command based. Okay. That's the reason why. Okay, so now when the first time uh, install RxDP, the browser is not active. You have to install the browser. Everything is documented on, on the full installation. Uh, before I access, uh, as a matter of fact, before I access the browser, 
I need first to open the console. And in order to start my Jupyter Notebook session, I do all in lowercase. Lab. Notice that when, when I am finished installing uh, Anaconda, you see the prompt will have like a base. This is the indication that you have Anaconda installed already in your in your console, you know, in your system. Okay. I'm gonna click here. Jupyter Lab. This will open the browser automatically into your uh, notebook session. And this is what originally here. This is Don Interactive. Don Interactive. This is SQL Alchemy. Okay. So let's start here. Basically, when you first start working with with a brand new notebook document, this will come out. It's going to tell you what kernel you want. Here, if you want to change to anything, you can change to PowerShell, C Sharp, whatever. So let's do. PowerShell, select. And now here, so PowerShell is on, it's selected, and it, this is one of the good thing about Jupyter Lab and .NET PowerShell. It allow you uh, auto completion. You enter, we not execute everything. It says this is based on execution happens on any cells. You have to click and execute cells individually. Okay, you tell me I have PS version 702. Okay, so that's that's an example, but then we can also change this to We can miss and match this save the doc. It is safe in the document. And I'm going to do. Import. Platform. And we do. Platform. And if I execute. As you can see, the cells have run in different kernel separately, right? So this is very, very interesting because you can mix and match different code on a single document. Now, um, got a little bit ahead of myself in here, so let's take the sample here. This is a notebook where I added some markdown to it. Does it give you an idea of what you can do? You can prepare a document, you can pass to one of your technical people to do something. OK, this is an example of if I this cell is selected. This isn't you click on raw. This is how it was created. You change this back to markdown. Click and it changes to how it is displayed. There's the heading two, heading three. This one here is a very nice. We can show you how to create a, a list of check options. Like you want to provide this to someone. Oh, I need to check. This code against this system. So we can lay it out which systems, uh, do a check mark, send it to him. Uh, you see the raw, how it was built. This is how it was built. So you have the raw version and then the markdown version. Okay. So I'll give you all the example here of how to do this. Uh, let me go back to this one here and we put it back to markdown. Run it. In the next selected cell, I'll show you more information on how it was created. This is a block of code that you can put in between the, the tick, the three ticks. Okay, and then you can do uh, clear back to markdown. And then in this case, I have done net PowerShell. Well, look at this. I could run this because this is running. Uh, keep in mind, this session that I'm running, this, uh, this uh, browser is on Linux. So I can run Linux command. This will not work in here because I don't have a I don't have a map drive, a Z map drive. So I'm going to show you here. I will have a, a map drive labeled C. I'm going to show you that when I when we move to on to another system. Okay, but this is the perfect way. It is the perfect command 
uh, when you run this on a double, uh, on the Windows system for Linux on another machine, they have a map drive Z, and this is how you mount. Keep in mind that in Linux, in order to mount a drive or to mount a shared folder, you have to create a placeholder. Okay, you have to create an empty placeholder, and that's how you map. And then you can route the map from. Okay, I'm gonna map this. Windows folder, share folder to this Linux empty folder. That's how it does. OK, and of course, this is how I'm saving some information here, uh, displaying it uh, just to show you that I got. See Mount C, uh, access Mount C, boom. This is all my files. So it works, works great. So uh, PowerShell in Linux, running Linux command and of course PowerShell commands. Perfect. Now, what is the next one I got? OK, now we're going to work on mixing kernels, right? Already show you a little a little bit of, of, of that code. But in this case, on my this notebook, I created, let me close this up here. Close this, no, I don't need to save it. Close this, I don't need to save it. All right, so now it's the same thing. I have my, uh, my markdown created before. Okay, this is how it was created. Then yeah, mic down, save it. That's saved that way. Uh, here I have a piece of code uh, in in C sharp, just to make sure that you see that everything is I'm gonna delete the through the output because this is based on individual cell that I'm executing on. If I click that cell, and boom, there you go. That's the change. Okay. I already noticed before you have a different output. That's because you can save the document, give it to somebody else. OK, run this code and give me the result back. So you can have a previous version of a document and having the other person give you what he has on his system. It's kind of good for, for, for tech support, I would say. OK, and then of course, now we got here below using the magic code. Uh, every kernel uh, may have what is called a magic code. Uh, and in this case, I'm here, I'm using the magic code to within C sharp, .NET C sharp, I can run a PowerShell command or, or query PowerShell. So this is just, let me just do clear this up. Anaconda, um, what does the person you share with have to have on their computer? Well, you know, a notebook is a notebook. So um, as long, I, I will keep it Anaconda always. It's, it's, it's a, honestly, I think it's a better product. It is a better you know, product. My, my question is, do they do they have to have you know, uh, C Sharp or do they have to have SQL Server running? What what do they have to have besides Anaconda when you share that that file with them in order to view it and 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 uh, execute the commands? You have the, the Python SQL tool. You have the .NET Interactive already in place. Anaconda already provides you with, with Python 3. Um, they give you a heads up first of the components. Let me jump a little bit here to my, I gotta put this in my, in my GitHub repository. I have a section of a folder here on setup. If you know, if you want to know what took to get all this all this thing straightened out, okay, I guess that's my question. Does the person you share with have to have the same setup? Yes, uh, it, yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay, good. Got it. I mean, that will be greatly beneficial. All right. So, so, but I'm giving a little more. It says what benefits give you with Don Interactive, and this is one of them because within the .NET kernels, you have this ability of mix match, uh, uh, you know, running PowerShell, running F sharp. The only way to do it for now, they have it a pound uh, exclamation sign, then PowerShell. And this, what it does is, then you have the ability to run pieces of PowerShell code in there. Okay. If I run this, I already put a, a already put a, a, how you call it, uh, an issue, a ticket for, for this. This will very, very beneficial to include 
Python on it. So in this case, I try this because, oh, let me see if they fix it. No, they haven't fixed it yet. But this might be in the near future. That way we can have every possible kernel available within the .NET in, uh, in order to uh, mix and match code in there. OK, and of course here, all right, well, my workaround for that is I use PowerShell. I called, uh, let me make sure I clear this up. You see, uh, PowerShell, but within PowerShell run Python and please run me the uh, uh, Python script. So when I click here, it's running my Python script, which gave me the, uh, the OS release information out. OK, so, so, so you see that the, 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 the extensibility of how you can use uh, uh, PowerShell and .NET. This is all .NET interactive piece, OK? The all .NET interactive piece. And what else do I have in here? Did I copy that? Or the same thing that I, that I did before, copy files around. All right, so now, what's the next level now? Next level now will be, OK, well, let me work with SQL Server. Then again, I have a document, I have my headers, I have my information, you know, OK, you have to install SQL Server module uh, in Linux. Uh, and in this case, we have a series of IP address port number. Uh, we're just going to create this. I mean, let me clear the output on this. As you can see, I saved this before. Notice this, before I was running three IP addresses, OK, and I want to clear this up. So this is something you can give to a person. Hey, I expect this same result, right? Let me clear this up too. You see the whole flow in here. And of course, before I test all this, you know, I could have already test this with, with PowerShell. Hey, Corey Cafe, I'll give you an example of the snippets that I could use in here. Uh, Python this is an example of how I took out the, uh, the, uh, the OS release on that example with a Python name. And then here are a couple of code snippets that I use in different of the, of the, the same thing that you can copy paste into, into the uh, uh, notebook, okay? So in this case, okay, let's run this. I highlight the cell, click, give me a result. Okay, I'm just checking, uh, the array is built correctly. And then I'm going to run query information for the database version. And I highlight the cell, click on it. If it failed, shame on me. I test this before, so it should work. I give it a little bit. Keep in mind, running this from WSL, and here are the Windows, 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 Linux. So you can see from my same script that I reused before on Windows, I'm able to pull out one of the Ubuntu machines, and this is because I have uh, my full version Ubuntu VM in Hyper-V uh, with an active uh, SQL Server. Okay, all right, now, getting this a little further, right? So now we can go ahead and, and um, look at the sample for SQL Server using Alchemy Python SQL tool. This is a very interesting tool. I was, uh, a, if you ever have worked with uh, Azure Data Studio, uh, which is the VS Code for SQL Server, they do have a kernel for SQL. So I try to say, where is that kernel? There's no, there's no kernel available named SQL. So they have it, I guess, proprietary. Uh, uh, it's only for SQL, uh, for Azure uh, Data Studio. It's only have it available. So the next thing I can come up with is with SQL Arc uh, Alchemy Python. And basically, after you install this component, let me go back to the launcher here. This is how you test it. And probably install, you have this ability. If you here look at the help, you can tell this, it's basically they, although SQL Server supported, they will give you an example of, oh, what the URL you need to use for SQL Server. Uh, lucky for you guys, 
already got it. It took me a little bit of work to, to, to do this. And basically it looks similar to progress, username, password, local host, port. And in this case, I think this is a database, but basically this is how it is. This is a string. You use SQL, SQL, uh, MSSQL, ODBC, PYODBC is, in, is needed. Then in this case, I'm looking for ASA authentication. So imagine this is a username. Password, yeah, fortunately, you got to include the password there. Uh, this is one of my systems. This is, one, this is my local system. SQL Server port that I assigned to my, to my SQL Server. And this is a database name. And of course, then the ODBC driver that is needed. When you have the, um, when you have the connection string well defined to test, put them in here, press enter, and look at this. I have access, I have a quick access to my, to my database uh, tables in here. Now that I know that this is working, I can go back to my, uh, let me close this up, close this up. I can go back to my, to my uh, notebook, and the first thing I need to do, I need to load the SQL extension. If I try to use that, I thought, oh, maybe SQL extension I have already tested on my on my uh, SQL tool there, and I click this. You know what? Let me clear all for so this. Let me clear all up. Boom. All right. So, load SQL is already loaded. Perfect. Uh, if I try to access my my um, database table, ah, wait a minute. Oh, you need you load the extension. You need to load the connection. So here it is, I'll load the connection. And now when I go back, it doesn't give you any, any information. Maybe I should put a, a request for, let, it, let you know that it's connected. Uh, but now when I access uh, the table, that employee, ooh, open. which one are you using here? Another good example, good, 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 all right. You want to play with me? Uh, let me do the correction. See how it goes. Uh, let me change this. Now let's see what's going to happen here. Boop, boop, cross my fingers. Invalid. Ah, of course, invalid object. I have a type it wrong. Ah. Right, so wait a minute. Here it is. I forgot the S. Here is the information that I have my connectors working with the one that was selected. My databases, uh, my table name is listing, and you can see it's working. All right, so you have access, a graphical access of your table. Uh, you can query, check. And now what's the most important thing here? This is all done on my R uh, on my RTM version of Windows 10. Okay. Now I got all this, all, all of this uh, uh, notebook available. Now sharing them, right? Okay. For this uh, next round of demo, I'm gonna go to my Windows Insider. This is my Windows Insider system. Okay. Uh, it shows here. Windows is tighter preview is the latest build. Already got here the uh, uh, the IP address on my WSL. Keep in mind, each WSL is is self-contained. Okay, uh, the only way to access the only way to access uh, uh, WSL system is through SSH. Okay, and I I will do that session afterwards. Uh, it's, it's a little bit tricky. It's it's Takes a little bit, but you have to play around with with uh, starting and stopping some of the uh, SSH services in order to connect. Uh, but in this case, this is all remote desktop. Um, I'm gonna connect to it. And I'm going to start the same thing in here. I need to start Jupyter Lab. Jupyter Lab. 
up and I'm gonna, as you can see, this is customized. This is my insider, this is my test environment. We already have a, a, a it's not this, the plain vanilla prompt. I have some customization already done on it. Uh, and here you're gonna do, and you're gonna go back, go back, go back. And you can see I've done a lot of couple of things in here. Jupyter Lab, enter. To so start the process, enable the uh, open the browser automatically. And you will see a different a different uh, uh, Jupyter Lab opening here. I'll show you why. All right. Okay, so let me close this up for now. In this one, as you see, have more kernel because I added this after the fact. Uh, py spark, spark, spark r. Maybe open white in here. Perfect. So now the first thing I'm going to do is uh, let me see, do I have it here? Aha, see so you have a good. Now, here I do have, I'm gonna show the whole flow in here. I have a C drive map, okay? So now if I go to my, I haven't used this, let's use this. If I do dir slash mount slash you can see here I have C drive, WSL, and Z. If I do Z, it's nothing. I don't have anything in there, okay? So now, with this next command, I'm gonna map my Windows C drive to my Linux mount C. Aha, perfect. Look at this. There's one thing I haven't mentioned, but I wanted you to see uh, see the error. Sudo will always require you to uh, to put in you know your password. There's a security. It's a high it's a higher level, right? So in order for me to properly do this, well, and I open another session in here. Hey, hey, make sure I. Highlight terminal paste. Nope, I don't want that. I thought I did right. Oh, copy. Perfect. Enter. Enter my password. If, one, if I want to confirm that everything is fine, slash mount, slash Z, I got connection. I connected to my Windows drive. All right, so uh, and now I'm going to be able to go here. Let me see now here. Now that I got that, now what I'm going to do is cp slash mount slash c slash, uh, oh, wait a minute, I need to go to, let me change directory first. Furthermore, slash 
notebooks. Oh. And now I'm going to do CP star dot IPY notebook to slash home slash max D enter. So I went a little longer way in this. But to show you what 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 you can do, I could I could have gone straight to the console and and do that too, but in this case, well, I show you everything is there, and now I need to I'm missing one template cross platform SQL. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. I just realized that I may need Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so Got terminal, we got this, EIR. I guess I never moved that, that, where is it at? Let me jump here to my, this one file that I'm missing. Let's see if I can recover here pretty fast. Now I'm gonna show you here. PowerShell, no. Uh, I'm gonna go here. Give me a second here to recover. I'm missing the most important file I wanted to show. I open in my Windows version. It's one file I didn't move. And that's the most important file of all. Well, I can show it in here. What the hell? All right. So, I wanted to show you from here, but at least here I, sh I show the alchemy and I show you that uh, we can move uh, uh, notebooks around between systems. Now, in here, I have, I'll leave the deeper example using uh, Alchemy's uh, Python SQL tool and basically show the same examples that was done before. I mean, I need to load back to make this thing work. Let me clear all output. Go back. Let me skip results in here. You can see here, all right, okay, let's keep going. Uh, also, because you have Python installed, you so also have Panda included in your in your Python uh, packages. So in this case, I'm running uh, the data frame. It's a different type. It's how the default way it looks, uh, your result looks, but here I'm gonna use data frame at the bottom here. Looks nicer. See, uh, it's an example of the uh, uh, Python uh, LS magic shortcuts that that you have. Sample, you can run uh, JavaScript, HTML, things that you can embed within your cell uh, to, to get results back. 
Okay, so now uh, let's see here. Ah, now it's going to change databases. I'm going to use the worldwide importer uh, data warehouse database. I'm going to load that in, use that string. Then I'm going to confirm. I'm going to make sure that I have connection to the database. It is for you, Cecilia. Okay, so here you see we got results. Uh, in this other one, I'm creating a temporary file, so uh, a temporary, you know, table here. So I'm going to drop it in case it's there. Okay, it's not there. Perfect. So now here I'm going to do the uh, create, I'm going to select some data, and I'm going to create uh, a temporary table called sales totals. 100 road affected, returning. Now I'm going to take a look at my, the table I just created. That's the table. Uh, now in this one, I'm going to select, I'm going to keep narrowing down. I'm going to get some totals here. And I'm going to save the total uh, of the records in a variable. I'm going to display the content of that variable. Now I'm going to do a plotting. Cecilia, it's for you. I hear you. All right, here we go. Here we go. You're going to see sample of a pie? Yeah. There you go. There you go. And then you're going to see a sample of a, of, a, of a bar. Nice. Okay. And then, of course, I'm going to select the SQL server I'm using in here. This is the Windows version, so. But the same thing can apply to a, oh, wait a minute, what am I doing here? Okay, yeah, so here I keep going. Which one is this? Uh, yeah, this one might not because I changed some things in here. So, ah, uh, wait. This one, uh, one, okay, so let me try this one here. See if it grabs the, okay, perfect, all right. So it, it took the uh, worldwide, yeah, there you go. Paste the one. That's that. I'm gonna save this. You can want to save the results in a in a uh, CSV type. And now we can read back the CSV. I need to include this uh, this notebook in my in in the ones I'm giving away, so you can experience with it. Uh, and then, of course, because I created my CSV file from my sys databases, it's here, in the bottom here. Double click it and look what it does. How you like that? Nice. nice. Very nice. So yeah. yeah. So I'm. 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 I mean, uh, notebook is really an interesting thing. Okay, uh, of course, coming from a uh, from a developer, uh, SQL developer environment, when I used to do it, uh, it, it's, it just, it, it just, I could see the benefits of when people are preparing some documentation, and they have a test environment. They all they look at this result. Is it all? They can grab snippet of code, so they can try it. In order for a QA, okay, the developers in my QA environment try this. You can have the same result. Save the cop, say the original document, uh, developer document. There's a QA document. Match the result. You know, you can see the different result between them. I mean, I think this is a very, very uh, interesting way to to use note, notebook. And I'm just thinking as as a as a developer part part of that. But as you can see, it allows you also to. Uh, uh, check for pieces of data, do do plotting, uh, uh, and with, you know very well, Python is very well used for data science and R. And now we got Spark, and now we got .NET because they realized the importance of it, okay? So I'm back to my presentation here. I got a couple of links in there. Um, keep in mind that all, all the Jupyter Lab to work with the SQL tool is based on Python 
uh, with the Anaconda, the older version, uh, uh, which is February through maybe April versions, because as soon as Anaconda uh, Jupiter uh, Jupiter Lab hits version two, that SQL tool stop working. Okay, so you have to use the the older version. That's that. That's so far. They have been working on the fix. I saw I saw the issue posted in their in the GitHub site uh, since I think I would say May. This is being August now that we expect now to be sold, but it's it's gonna come along the line. So for now, stick to to the Anaconda that have version three point seven and Jupiter Jupiter Lab version one point X, and and you'll be fine. You'll be able to do all this magic in it. Okay, I guess that 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 all I got. Damn, I Ooh. thought I was gonna run out of time. <laughs> Meanwhile, while while you're talking, I'm trying to install Anaconda, <laughs> and it's uh, updating to version one point nine point one two. Okay, so that may be yeah. safe. Yeah, I mean it's just yeah, it's just the um, how do you call it? Um, on, on my set of instructions that I that I, that that I'm gonna post. I, I give you February version of Anaconda, which works great, you know, to get you started. Then again, you can use this for testing, you know, yeah. get get used to until they come with it with the latest version. And you know that all these components, they don't update themselves. You got to manually update them. It's called Linux. That, yeah, yeah. This doesn't give you a Windows prompt to, oh, this is version is going to be updated. No, no, no. You gotta be right. conscious that these are individual components. .NET Interactive, all of these are 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 components that need to be updated manually. And I have but, already. But a lot of them, a lot of them are pretty easy. So you know, some simple command update. You know. Yes. No. 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 That's the beauty. That's what I love. You know. Because there's package managers. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's you know even even when you install something and it doesn't work, it gives you already the hint what command line you need to use to fix it right. and most of the time we'll fix it right you know I, I do like linux a lot because of that do you do you know whether azure notebooks is is looking at, has a preview with with dot net included in it uh i haven't i haven't taken a look at that yet good honestly question. it just seems but, like that, that would be a logical place um to be able to just just go and not have to worry about putting any of this on your machine. Just use Azure Notebooks, and oh yeah, it, it, you know they they were the one that they would be the ones that would put .NET on there, uh, or have an interest in it. So I just didn't know if they had a preview out. I think their main uh, the, the main page, what I pull up, always just has all the implementations of of Python, R, and and um, you know, one other. Um, one other kernel, but I, I, I would just think that it can't be long before Azure Notebooks has this all prepackaged. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but I. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Ooh. Why did I go? I open. I open. Ah, terminal. Yeah, because it's not really Bash. So yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah, I'm gonna move that. I'm gonna move that document that I was working on right now, and. Um, Let's see, MS. Okay, now I'm gonna CP2. This is gonna take me a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna move this document into the oh wait a minute, I forgot something. Oh, I can post that one later. Let's 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 get into this. Now one other thing that I had on my on my list of things to do, and we have a little bit of time left. Uh, is I'm gonna post all this in GitHub. Let's do a live posting in the GitHub of all this session. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me go ahead and do this. And I go to my GitHub library. Uh, open my main section, repositories, and I'm gonna do new. Repository name. Let's look for my folders. Uh, 
Let me copy this because I'm doing it based on events. Because every event is going to change. Something is going to change in every event. So let me go back in here. Public. Uh, already have a readme file in there. So I'm going to I'm going to experiment with this. Uh, Coders, right? Coders, cafe. Online event. For the public, create repository. that I did it differently before. Uploading existing file. Yes. All right. Here we go, guys. Here we go, guys. See how it goes. Then I'll upload that final one later. What file? Ah, I'm going to go for it. Oh, what happened? <laughs> What happened? Dude. Did I have something locked? So but it's, it's impossible to have everything going perfect, right? <laughs> Did, I didn't see the error. Yeah, no, it, it says something went wrong. Setting up in desktop. I just click here, uploading. Filed. And normally you go in and you, you already create a repository there? Yeah. It might be it might be because I have do I close already close uh, PowerPoint. Maybe PowerPoint was locking it. Could be. We'll see now. Oh, is is commit changes. I think it only grabbed my, it didn't grab the folders. Okay. Uh, add files. Upload files. Okay. Choose again. I thought I could grab the whole thing and, and put them in there. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, I think the uh, the PowerPoint file was locked in. I don't see any errors right now, so I should be able to upload. Cancel. Right here. What? 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 Okay. One thing for sure: you just document, basically. So remember, all documents need to be unlocked. Need to be closed.
Tcharam! You got it. Got it. I got it. So now I need to add one more file in here, which is the one with the database. Where is that at? Where is that at? Jupyter Lab. This is on my user folder. So let's look for that. So I was able so to uh, install uh, Anaconda, bring up a Jupyter, Jupyter notebook, and write some C sharp and execute it. <laughs> yeah, you know, installation are pretty quick, and and. <clears throat> And it, 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 it's very quick in Windows, you know. Yeah. And and because uh, if you notice the the my setup for Linux WSL2, you know very well that in Linux, in I mean in Windows when you install Python, you can use PIP or you can use Conda. Conda yeah. is the same as PIP, but it's the you know it's the Anaconda version of it. Um, and then let me go ahead and look for yeah. my. Phone. Oh. And I already had, uh, you know, .NET 3.1 and uh, Python installed, so it was simpler. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. Is there's one little trick that happens in 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 uh, in Linux, and is that you have to at a certain point you need to add the path in order for the .NET interactive to work. Right. So yeah, uh, where is it? Where are you? Where are you? There you go. I'm waiting to, that's the last. So does anybody have any questions? Yeah, there you go. I have my sessions already up there. Cool. Okay. Can you uh, paste the link for that in the chat? Yes, 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 yes. Max, this is Scott. I have a question. Sure. Um, I'm just curious. Is Sapient using this technology? In oh no 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 no. Uh, uh, keep 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 in mind. This is more for the documentation side. Uh, there's no. It, it, there's no practical uh, use for Sapiens or to use this within our product yet. Okay. Okay, so I guess my next question is, do you know of anybody that's using this? And if so, what are they using it for? Data science. No, no. I mean, this particular Jupyter Notebook, Anaconda, even Python by itself, is data science oriented. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's big it, 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 Python's been on for many, many years. It's been cross-platform for many, many years. Finally, us, the Windows side, is catching up with this thing. Okay. That's why you see R being integrated with SQL Engine. You see Python being integrated with, 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 with SQL Server Engine uh, uh, because of data science, number crunching, uh, uh, machine language level stuff. Am I right, uh, Cecilia? Yep. <laughs> so, uh, Scott, you're asking about Jupyter Notebooks in particular? Uh, no, just the, the, this whole notebooks thing. Is, is anybody you? I'm, I'm curious oh, what they're huge. using it. Oh, yeah, it is. there's a lot of people, millions especially millions of people in, in the people worldwide. Yeah, if you have anything to do with data science or machine learning, you're using this stuff all the time, most likely. So they're using it for statistics. They're using it for what are they using it for? Well, data science is nine, you know, eighty, maybe ninety percent data wrangling. You know, so uh, you can easily um, script out things and. You can interactively do things step by step and then go back and replay it. And so okay. you might have to uh, pull in a CSV file. Then you have to pull features out of it for machine learning. Then you have to train a model. So you, you can do lots of steps like that. And there's some nice tools to help you. OK. I found a link that mentions about Jupyter Notebook for Visual Studio. Here's the link in the chat. Yeah. I'm sorry, what's that? That's that's good. That's good. Of course, this is in Visual Studio Code. 
I'm just looking for, looking for the one in Visual Studio. Yeah, we, we even have a, we even have notebooks for Azure, but it's free. Yeah, they've been in Azure quite a while. Yeah, I started I started from 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 below level. I know that especially when you're talking about VS Code, you're talking more about the Azure Data Studio will have notebook in it, especially they have the SQL kernel, which is not available outside of Microsoft. The only solution to work around that SQL kernel is using the uh, the Alchemy uh, Python SQL tool. Because it's, it's more like Microsoft proprietary, you know, but why do I have to limit myself for using uh, 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 Azure Azure Data Studio component, which is the the lookalike of you know is a uh, the brother of of VS Code, and this way I have a lot more flexibility in the industry. Before they use uh, uh, VS Code, they they uh, cross platform. They Jupyter Lab was already there be before that happened. But uh, hey, Scott, the other thing you know. Is a Jupyter Notebook, you're probably not using it in a normal line of business application or even to develop it unless you have a machine learning or some other data heavy kind of thing to do. Right, right. I, I, I get that. I was just curious if we had some real world examples. Now, the close I can get is just the graph that I that I show you with uh, with, with, with Alchemy. So okay. data, data crunching, get total display on a pie chart or or, or a circle, you know, and then uh, from from that on, it's just a matter of having the data and how we want to display it, you know. Okay, I mean that answers my question. Yeah, and then and then uh, and then also, you know, uh, I was leaning towards that that because I I used to work in a developer environment. We do a lot of quality, uh, you, you know, you hold for the flow from the 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 dev. QA production, and then just creating a document, some piece of information that need to be addressed, and 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 you can go up before and after because you save you save the information there. Okay, it is safe in a notebook. Okay, so you can give that document to somebody else. Oh, look, test this in QA and give me the res uh, so I can we compare result. One document was a death, and the other document is QA. You know, and then you compare result. Okay, so um, you know, I think it's practical use. It's another practical use besides data science. You know, but then that's me. <laughs> and then, of course, if if the company wants to implement that solution for that same purpose, that's that's their decision. You know, you to see it practical. I need to fix this one. All right. So, any any uh, questions? I see it on GitHub. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I did. I did. Did I paste you the? Uh... Uh, I can do it. I got it right here. Oh, okay. Sorry for that. I got distracted. <laughs> I've been talking to the New York City. We can see all those talks you've been giving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got to change the link here for the for the video. That's that one thing, one change, change I need to do. <laughs> Get rid of that one. Thought I'd clean it afterwards. Okay, well. well, that's great. Yeah, no, I, I, I love it. I mean, it, it, it just all of a sudden during the weekend. I cut up to how can I display the graphical uh, the graphical desktop in Windows to System for Linux, and then also I cut up with uh, with SQL Server in Windows to System, uh, sorry, SQL Server in Windows to System for, for Linux, and what's the other one? And of course the SQL tool, because that was really bugging me. It's like how come Azure Data Studio have a SQL engine and it's not available for a regular you know Jupyter Lab notebook? So the solution was alchemy, <laughs> SQL alchemy. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll in general I'll skip the uh, Linux unless I have to use it. But yeah, no, no, no. It's, and, it's, and sometimes I do, you know. But 
Yeah, I'm, I mean, keep, keep in mind that the, the, I like the fact that I can have learned Linux finally, yeah. and the, thanks to Windows System for Linux, you know, and and I can see the difference. I can work with both now and feel comfortable with it. Yeah, you know, just because it's available there. Yeah. If it's there, why not using it? You know, yeah. at least for testing. You know. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Max. All right. Uh, if there's no more questions, we're going to stop the recording. Sounds right. good. Thanks, everybody. Recording Thanks, Dave. Is stopping. Thanks, Max.